I'm Simon Salatko. I'm the product manager for MakeVR, and I've been with the project helping to really figure out what the set of capabilities we need are and to uh, help launch the Kickstarter project. Uh, I'm the head of development for MakeVR, Paul Malinek. Uh, MakeVR is a, uh, an immersive CAD modeling system that combines a natural two-handed interface with a uh, professional CAD engine. And who do you think is your primary target? Sure, you know, it's amazing because it's very flexible. So when you make it easy for anybody to do 3D design, we find very young people are able to navigate and build in, in virtual worlds. And then there are a lot of people who simply want to create 3D models with precision um, and create virtual goods for sale in online worlds or simply to have them and to, to modify them. And then there are people who own 3D printers who want to be able to create and build models for 3D printing. We think we're going to be able to do a great job supporting really those three categories of users. The other really cool thing we're doing is we're out of box supporting the Oculus Rift. So since we're providing a two-handed experience, which is itself a virtual reality experience, Combining that with immersive visualization with the Oculus Rift creates an amazingly immersive virtual reality design environment. And we think that's going to be of interest to people who are interested in playing in worlds as well as people who want to build realistic models. And the system uh, actually was designed very much with head-mounted uh, displays in mind. You'll see from the uh, tool panel that we have that uh, uh, you, you have all the control you need. You're never groping for a mouse and keyboard. Uh, everything is self-contained and, and expected that you're you're going to take over all the senses of the user. One other thing worth mentioning with uh, uh, Make VR, uh, it's very easy to do freeform design. In uh, it's a natural for uh, immersive interaction. Precision design is something that is very different, and we've added several features: our jig kits, the uh, snappable, uh, stretchable grids, and and rulers. Uh, and the tracking on, on features in the, in the, in the world uh, that makes it so that you can guide your uh, tools, guide your objects for precision cuts, very much like a machinist or a carpenter in a, in a, uh, uh, a tool shop would uh, build a uh, precision uh, construction. Yeah, it's amazing how very fundamental objects like the Booleans that you can do in Make VR, which is to add or subtract objects, you can add or subtract very primitive objects like a sphere or a toroid, but you can also add and subtract whole models. And so one of the neat things we're able to do is we're able to import objects for, uh, that have been developed by other 3D computer-aided design applications. So if uh, an object is designed in SolidWorks, we're able to import that via the .sat file format. And then you can manipulate that as a, an object just like you can manipulate the primitives and make VR. So you can make a mold uh, from it. You can use it to add or subtract from other objects. So each object becomes a tool itself. I'll let you take that. This sure, sure. sure, so we're gonna launch it on Kickstarter as a crowdsource project. We're really trying to do something um, to 3D design uh, that's a breakthrough, which is to bring 3D design to virtually anyone by creating a very natural and intuitive interface. Traditionally, 3D design has been extremely difficult to learn. And, and the applications that are used for 3D design are phenomenally expensive. We think we can break through both of those to make an extremely uh, affordable uh, product that will help anybody to design and play collaboratively in 3D. This is almost a gamified 3D design environment. So for people who want to create and build worlds and play with them, we'll be able to support that. To people who want to 3D print, we'll support export to .stl. And this will be an indispensable tool who want to prepare models with healing and hollowing and export for 3D printing. And how long have you been working on MakeVR? MakeVR is about uh, three years of development, uh, two engineers, uh, two to three engineers at uh, any given time. Um, it's been in conception for many, many years. It's the reason I came into the industry and the reason some, some of the other people who have worked on it have come into the industry. The uh, idea was to build a medium that uh, made it easy for non-technical people to create technical works. So how do you anticipate the program changing from its current form uh, after the Kickstarter? What are, the, what are you trying to do with it? 
Sure. So what you're seeing today is um, an alpha of the application, and it represents our starting point. So, you know, sometimes people are afraid that something's already done. Make VR is not already done. The key features um, that we're going to add are expanding the precision tool palette and making those extremely intuitive to use. Um, there's work to be done in terms of setting up collaborative environments so that multiple people can collaborate to work in the same, in the same world. We call it multiplayer. Um, there's the creation of an online community and object and world repository. That's one of the goals of the Kickstarter. We've got a bunch of stretch goals, including physics, which is a really important one, which will allow people to essentially play their worlds. You combine that with multiplayer, and people are going to be able to collaboratively design worlds that they can then play collaboratively, that have motion and destructible objects, and all sorts of extremely capable tools for building and exploring virtual worlds. Um, also in the stretch goals, we have some fairly advanced uh, texturing capabilities and others. So we're excited when the Kickstarter launches, we'll, we'll talk about all of those capabilities and you'll be able to see that as a part of the project. Um, but there's a level of refinement, testing, model building, and then this roadmap of features that we've uh, discovered as we've worked with testers and uh, young people, students, and experienced designers and ask them what do they need to make this tool fulfill its promise of making 3D design available to anyone. There are uh, quite a few natural features that fall right out of our CAD engine, but uh, we see some other uh, modeling features that will add new genres of uh, objects that they can build, uh, kind of a dream come true, uh, a mud box, uh, ZBrush kind of uh, capability that driven by two hands and with full scale of the environment will give artists and uh, designers absolute control over their scenes. We also want to add tools to build virtual goods. So there are uh, specific tools with controlling polygon count and um, crafting objects to scale that are necessary for the creation of virtual goods. So that's also, again, in this list of capabilities that we'll be building out with, uh, with the Kickstarter project. Um, one thing that is uh, very natural in immersion is uh, assembling uh, pieces together. So stretching and snapping and uh, coloring pieces to uh, form assemblies. What distinguishes generally, what generally distinguishes uh, Make VR is that we change the geometry as well. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we don't want to uh, add to a kind of a kit building feature. And not only will we uh, provide kits that are pre-built that uh, people can assemble in you know, a million different ways, but we'll provide a kit building capability and crowdsource the content creation as well. So by uh, turning a thousand or a million uh, modelers loose creating new kits, everyone will benefit because they'll all have uh, uh, very expressive kits and the ability to build a million objects out of one kit and then have 10,000 kits, they'll be able to build uh, an amazing uh, variety of scenes. Yeah, and I think we've taken you through the gamut of baseline and stretch goals. So it, again, when we launch the Kickstarter project, all that will be pretty explicit. But it's an exciting set of features that are really driven by the needs of these various groups of users. Was it difficult to um, design a program where, you're na where you have natural navigation? Uh, the the two-handed interface uh, has actually been around for some time. Uh, it was originally uh, devised in 1992, 95, something like that. Um, we adopted that uh, two-handed interface, and it's a uh, a beautiful, uh, necessary, and sufficient way of navigating through space. In some sense, it uh, it's 3D multi-touch predating 2D multi-touch by cons uh, by a considerable number of years. And it's really the, a great innovation, and Paul tells the story well, but you know, when the two-handed interface was first devised, the controllers cost $5,000. And with the creation of the Razor Hydra, where you have precise uh, control uh, for less than $100, that really makes it possible to bring to market a, a two-handed interface application that is literally available and accessible to, to anyone. When you, you adapted that, gesture control, have you tuned it? Do you think there's further to go with it, or are you, are you satisfied with where it is? Uh, well, we see people uh, struggle with certain aspects of uh, particularly freedom of scale. I mean, that's the beauty of the two-handed interface, is you kind of don't care how big or how small you are. 
uh, you take advantage of, of your, your uh, ability to scale yourself way up to work on a, uh, a large area and way down to work on a small area. Uh, but uh, there are sometimes freedom is, uh, comes with responsibility and, and people, uh, we, we've created a tiered uh, training where uh, in full expert mode, uh, you can uh, scale to any size, you can uh, rotate about any axis, you can have uh, uh, roll and pitch, and, and uh, uh, that can be, uh, uh, it can cause some disorientation in, in a new user. So we have ways of, contr of uh, removing pitch and removing roll and uh, limiting scale so that people can uh, feel more comfortable when they're beginning, uh, and then slowly graduate to uh, the next level. Yeah, we also find, you know, 3D display and immersion really helps, right? So when you can judge depth, um, that is a big deal, and we support 3D display and, um, and the Oculus Rift out of box. It's true. If we could train every user in full 3D, then they would feel very comfortable looking at a 2D screen after that. How, how extensively have you guys tried the Oculus Rift with Make VR, and how does it change the experience? We've had the Rift for just a couple weeks. Um, Paul and his team were able to do the port in about a week. Um, the application was designed to have this independence from a uh, keyboard or mouse, so the interface was really designed for it, but they were able to, to move very quickly and complete that development. Uh, it, there, there's a, a, a direct connection with your, your actions when you're in the Rift. You uh, look at your hands, and your hands are exactly where they are. There's no, nothing indirect about it. You, you're not moving a mouse on a uh, table and seeing a cursor move on the screen. You're not even moving a uh, 3D tracker uh, in your hand and seeing something move on the screen. Instead, you're seeing your hand move in the world that you're in. So when you want to acquire an object, you just reach up and grab it. There's no, uh, like I said, there's no indirectness to that. It's absolutely direct and uh, absolutely natural, and we're pretty much wired for exactly that. We're, we've evolved in exactly the capabilities that we need for that. You're able to work uh, with either symmetrically, the two hands doing the same thing, or asymmetrically, where like threading a needle, one hand is doing one thing, the other hand is doing something different, very different, and yet you know exactly how to control those kinds of uh, complex operations. Um, when are you going to Kickstarter? Sure, we're going to Kickstarter in April. So we're pretty excited about it. We're just getting ready and uh, telling everybody about what we're doing this weekend at GDC and getting ready to roll. Um, and so have you guys always had this, this high-level um, software experience uh, people with Sixth Sense, or is that more of a recent? No. So, yeah, I mean, it's... This knowledge comes from really Amir and Paul's experience in simulation and design. Paul is a lifelong designer, and you know it's it's hard to to say more. Uh, Paul's experience in two-handed interfaces and design is unparalleled, in my view. And he has brought all of that, and Make VR is his opus. Um, he's able to pour all that knowledge in. Amir has a lifetime of experience in high-end simulation. And it was really those forces coming together that helped create Sixth Sense and has now resulted in finally us being able to, to lean into design and bring Make VR to market. And uh, Amir and I actually got together very early in the uh, history of uh, Sixth Sense and have been working together since the, pretty much the very beginning. Um, and as far as the Razer Hydra goes, um, are, you, are you looking at a next generation of that technology? Because everybody seems to be uh, wanting to snap that up for uh, uh, virtual reality development. Sure. Well, we're leaders in two-handed interfaces. We, in, we intend to stay there. So I think that there are lots of exciting developments in terms of the evolution of the two-handed interface. The Razer Hydra is amazing because it provides excellent precision um, for 3D design, amazing range of motion. So I think most of the people who use the, the Razer Hydra are still not even tapping all of its potential. Our hope is with Make VR, we open up new ways to use um, the two-handed interface and the Razer Hydra that absolutely blow people away. And combined with the Rift, it's really going to make virtual reality um, just a, a, a refreshing and exciting experience. I think that between the Hydra and the Rift, you're opening Pandora's box of virtual reality, and consumers are suddenly going to be able to experience a virtual creation, design, and gameplay. And I, I think you, you may have mentioned it before, but uh, there's, there's a feature breakthrough in Make VR, but the cost breakthrough is maybe as important. Uh, 
uh, you know, under $100 for the Hydra, $300 for a head-mounted display. These are things, and the, the, just, just what's happened in the uh, PC industry, just in, in uh, computer graphics over the years, to have something that in, back in the day was a million dollars, if at any price, to have for under $500 is pretty amazing. And make VR will be, you know, very affordable again. Young people will be able to afford it. Students will be able to afford it. And 3D print enthusiasts will be able to afford it. Very good. Well, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate your time. You thank well, you very much. Bye-bye.